Hi, I'm Frankie Loyal. I'm here at Born Free 15 with my Trinidad 3 family and my extended family at Rest Brown Motorcycle Attorneys. Today, I'm going to be interviewing people who inspire, motivate, and shape our motorcycle community, not just locally, not just statewide, but also globally. I'm here to find out their inspirations and their future aspirations and how it coincides along the world of two wheels. So, without further ado, we're going to get this story cracking. We're going to see where the road takes us and history is going to commence. Right now, I'm here with one of our favorite personalities in the motorcycle community, ladies and gentlemen, Dump Truck. <laughs> that is like the most intimidating intro ever. I really have to deliver on this now. Hey, man, how you doing? <laughs> uh, Chris, Christian will put in the... Yeah. Right. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Enjoy your rules. How about San Modesto? Yeah. <laughs> well, so, this is really cool, man. I'm really glad to be here. Thanks for the yeah. invite. How's it going? What's been going on with you? I'm sure. Man, a little bit of everything, like for real. Uh, recently, uh, in the last like year and a half, I accepted a position with Sawicki Speed Exhaust. I'm now their right. brand manager, so that relocated me out to Charlotte, North Carolina. Right. And so, like, so many things are new. Uh, I love the job. It's going really well. I love my city. Uh, I live in a 103-year-old home. Like, most of my life, I've been on the road without a real address. I've right. had, like, points of reference right. and really nice friends and... And whenever I have a gig, I have a hotel room. So as right. long as business is busy, I've got a roof. Right. If it's not, I'm going to need your couch. Uh, and I did that for a super, super long time. Better part of 10 years. It was like right. nine and a half years or something like that. But now, like being out in Charlotte, working with Sawicki, you know, I've got a great girlfriend, wonderful partner. We have a medium-sized black dog. Uh, it's just the only way to describe it. Right. And uh, I'm in a good place. I feel like, you know, I've made some some good choices as of recent that have led to this opportunity and that and that's where i'm at right now i'm in the middle of a really good opportunity to uh to do something with a company that's bigger than me most of my career has been like hi my name is dump truck and that's like mm -hmm. my business i'm an mc i'm a voice actor uh and now it's i'm a part of a team right and that i haven't had since uh, my service really mm -hmm. uh, i was in the navy uh for about three years uh started off as a nuclear engineer found out that wasn't the room for me and <laughs> not, not for academic reasons just let's just but i'm not a nuclear engineer at heart so i uh, was able to leave that program and i checked on board the uss Fitzgerald ddg 62 arleigh burke class destroyer and uh and that is where my education began right and i went there searching ans for answers like grew up super sheltered uh very very religious uh couldn't really go to the movies, wasn't allowed to listen to most radio stations, things right. like that. Right. And so I had like my own aha moment towards the end of high school. And I knew I wanted to do something that just kept me moving. And at one point I drove past a Navy recruiting office. I made a U-turn and I raised my right hand for the first time. Wow. And that was it. And I was like, I know how to guarantee that I can go see the world and make up my own opinion because right. I didn't have a clear grasp on what the world really was about because I've just taken everybody else's word for it. That was the first time I took charge of my own life. That's cool, and you did, sir, so thank you for your service. Absolutely, thank you. Uh, we're, we've got a Christian behind the camera who's a Marine, Trinidad, my partner, who's a Marine, so we're a, our company's actually military-owned you know, and veteran-based. So not military-owned, but we're you know veteran-owned. Yeah, I feel Sorry. that. Sorry, see, I need some time. <laughs> but uh, so you said your upbringing was sheltered, so that meant... Uh, motorcycles were a no yeah they were definitely a no they were something that i knew that i wanted my old man uh he had a motorcycle in the 70s scared the snot out of himself on it and rode it back to the dealership a few days later and that was kind of it and whenever i was coming up it was like just never on the table even though i loved it and like right. really the first motorcycle that i fell in love with just aesthetically without knowing anything about bikes was a honda cbr and I was just like, that little rocket looks like it. It just looks like what I want to do. Right. I don't know. I don't know where it came from, but I loved that bike. And then, you know, you continue to learn more things as you get older. And then I discovered the Dyna Wide Glide. And that was like the first Harley that yeah. stole my heart. And there's millions of people that right. that bike did something for. It was like the first court of event. It was, yeah. Like this boom. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. That was the one. And then the rabbit hole began. Nice. And it was just all Harleys after that. Nice. And uh, and since then, I've expanded my mind to anything with two wheels, which is a way better uh, way of living because right. you get to say yes more. And yes is how you live your life, people. Right. No is how you protect yourself. Yes is how you live. 
So if no. there's no downside, the only thing is that you're a little weirded out, say yes. <laughs> Get over yourself. You'll have an amazing life experience. So what's good about it, you know, like once again, like, you know, our upbringings are, it's always interesting how we. Sure, yeah. You know, it's I, a foundation. I interviewed uh, Nils Arama, who, Aero Choppers. Right. Neil and I go back 30 years almost. We used to get in a lot of hot water together. <laughs> yeah. And we sat here and it was just like, we had that moment of awe where. I didn't think we'd turn out like this. We went to start up punk rock shows where there'd be riots and we'd get in the hot water, you know, as, as youngsters, but to where we ended up. But we also know what we didn't have in our corner, you know what I mean? And and what geared us to where we're at. So when I hear your story, I, w- I would have never thought that from the gate. Like, I, I just wouldn't have. So you never judge a book by its cover. Oh. But to hear it. Man, I was raised yeah. to be a Pentecostal preacher, like straight up. That was where I was supposed to go. So like... Okay. Daddy was a roughneck. Mama was a homemaker. Um, I was raised in South Louisiana in the swamp, literally like alligators in my backyard. Mama right. used to rake out the sandbox to make sure there's no alligator eggs in it, so the alligator doesn't eat your children. Wow. And uh, like our inclement weather days were sometimes hurricanes, but usually alligators on the playground. Right. Like we were everything wanted to eat us, but you know we fried up anyway. Wow. Um, and so like there was a, a very the church community was a very big part of the life, right? Right. And there's a lot of really great things that came from that. It's it's community, it's it's family, um, some moral standing. You know, uh, the the thing that I went out to go find for myself was a perspective of my own. So yeah, I was really sheltered. There's a lot of things I don't know about. Like I was a virgin until I was 19 years old. Like all of the, I didn't discover punk rock till I got into the service. Like there was just, when it was time for me to open my brain, uh, I mean, the first was the Ramones, uh, Petty Officer Love. He hated, I thought he hated me. Uh, he and Petty Officer Sean Love called me into his uh, workshop. He goes, you're going to meet me here at 1600. I was like, okay, sorry, 1800. And I was like, all right. And I go in there and he goes, sit down. I got work to do. And he just played music. And I was just like, what is yeah. I guess I looked that square when I got on the ship. He was like, hang on, this guy needs some edge. Wow. And uh, and it was really tight. And he, he's still a great man. And I'm very grateful for that musical journey. And there was other people on the ship that taught me a lot about music. That yeah. was definitely one of the things that I picked up because everyone's from everywhere. You know, right. Philippines, United States. Like, I mean. You ever see the Ramones? No. I got to see them several times. I hate I'll tell you. you what. Well, you know, how it started was I got into punk rock because I was trying to impress a girl. <laughs> and she's like, I like The Clash. You like The Clash? I'm like, yeah. Totally. I love The Clash. So I got on my BMX bike, rode to 7-Eleven. You had True Detective, Playboy, Hit Parader, Cream Magazine. And I'm just sitting there going like, I can't find anything on The Clash. Well, I had to go to this birthday party I didn't want to go to. And um, I just didn't gel with the guys. Right, so I yeah. had to go. And the older sister said, hey, uh, shut up over there in the room. I'm trying to, I'm trying to watch Saturday Night Live. The Clash is going to be on. And I went... I'll be right there. Can I watch the class? She's like, yeah, just sit down and shut up. Don't make any noise. I was like, okay. And then I remember when they came out, Ron Howard was a guest, you know, host. And I remember the first time they they played Straight to Hell. Yeah. And I was like, I don't know what that is, but I want to do that. Yeah. I want to do that. And, And I did. And, you know, I found the Ramones. I found the Cramps. And it's just, when you listen to punk rock music, like punk rock music from that era, yeah. or even any anything else, you listen to it when you ride? What do you like to listen to? When I ride, I don't listen to anything. No, really? Yeah, like, you know, there was a point I had a 100K on a 07 Street Glide. And when I first got it, I invested in the stereo. And, of course, you know, riding position, right. it's exhaust and all that kind of shit. But um, I invested in the stereo, and I had a really nice system. And for the last, like, two and a half years that I owned that bike, it was never on. Yeah. And now, well, for the most part, I ride with Bean, my partner. And so she and I, neither of us really listen to music. And most of the time, we're not even talking to each other, but we're still present right. for each other. And it's That's it's cool. nice. When something strikes, we get to share a moment. Most of right. my life, I've been solo. Like, I've never, don't have that many girlfriends in my, ex-girlfriends in my cachet. Right. Like, I was, you know, I'm a rambler, a loner, Dottie. <laughs> uh, and, but I was, though, and I loved it. Right. And so I've never had anyone to share those memories with. And now that's the thing I want most, is to stop telling stories and start creating them together. Right. And so for her and I, she and I, to be able to, to travel that way, it's new and it's yeah. awesome and i'm totally in love with her and it that's rad she was nice i met her at cook's corner yeah she's way pretty yeah, super nice <laughs> yeah good for you i mean it's good to, it's great we had frank ball jr here and, and you know his his girl was right over in the corner over there and he just praised her 
you know, and, and, it's, and I get to hear that again. It's, it's nice to know that it exists. See, people, it exists. It definitely does. Like, we're super supportive of what we do. Like, she, when our, our first year together, we've been together for almost four years. Uh, we went over 15,000 miles together on a motorcycle. And she had, like, she'd been on a bike before. That was her motorcycle experience. She wasn't on the bike for 15,000 miles before. Right. Um, and it just really opened up a lot of doors. And at that point, I was a full-time ambassador. And she's a really talented photographer and creator. And she didn't even know she was. Right. But she touched the camera, and it was amazing. And there was an opportunity suddenly for us to work together. Nice. To support each other's, like, hope of freedom. So, like, right. when we left New Orleans and lived in a camper for almost two straight years, like, I couldn't have done that without her. Right. And she couldn't have done that without me. And that's a really cool thing. Right. It's something, again, I've never really experienced. A lot of times that, you know, we're individuals. It can feel like you're in a partnership with another individual instead of a teammate and right so it's really cool when that team comes together and it's cool because it's well you guys obviously bring the best out of each other but it seems like you both found your way to get where you were to find each other we as did. opposed to just what's your name we're in love and you shack <laughs> up and then it you know it's good for you i it mean that's awesome. good i mean we didn't intend to fall in love tender is a hell of a thing See, I never, I never did that. Well, that was her game, right? So yeah. I, met, I met Bean, like, right at the very end. Like, she had just gotten divorced probably 15 minutes before I met her. And uh, figuratively, of course. But um, it was pandemic. Yeah. The only way to meet anyone new was to start on the Internet. You're not going to go to the bars. We were in New Orleans. Like, that place was shut down like nobody's damn business. Yeah. And uh, one thing leads to another. She sees a selfie. Bubbles. Remember Bubbles? Right. Everyone just stayed with their unit so you could live normal. Yeah. Found out that one of the people in my bubble was a person in her bubble. And then instantly she comes right over my friend Mariah's house and we're hanging out. And we almost just handle business like right there on the spot. And throughout the night I was like, I actually think I might like this person. Wow. You need to go home. That's right. And, uh, and yeah, we pumped the brakes and not for very long. But enough to like sit down and have a real conversation about it without a room full of people. Right. And, and you know we just continue to move through and she's flourishing in her own way in charlotte and That's and good. uh and has like her own uh, anatomical direction now yeah. and more so instead of it always being a you know something where it requires your partner to do which is great you got to have your autonomy and uh she's you know, a yoga teacher there and she's just crushing things yeah. crushing it and she we also still work together creating content for sawiki speed that's good so, you know That's there's great. there's always time for it to come together when we get home we get to like invest in ourselves it's great. Yeah, the, the only experience I had with Tinder, you know, <coughs> excuse me, Tinder versus Tinder, yeah. trickle chargers. <laughs> when I did the TV show, they asked, do you have any adult social media? I was like, like what? And they go, plenty of fish or barrel of fish, whatever. Shows you what I don't, I, I don't know that. I don't know that type of internet stuff. And he goes, uh, Tinder. And I go, oh, yeah, yeah. Well, you said you don't have adult, you know, websites. I go, I, I don't. But you said Tinder. I go, yeah. And they go, so you have one? I go, no, no, no I got three. I thought they were talking trickle charge <laughs> yeah. because we're doing the motorcycle. Because, show. you know, my batteries always need maintenance. Right? But, but the whole thing was like, oh, yeah. And they're like, you're confusing me. I'm like, how? It's like, you're confusing me. And then <laughs> and we're like, oh, oh, no. And so it's just, you know, it's just one of those things. It was but, a trip. It was never supposed to, it was supposed to be a flash in the pan and a good yeah. time. And it still is. Nice. <laughs> That's, rad. That's really good. So you're here at Born Free 15. Yeah. I know you've been here many times. As much as it's the same, it's different. We all know that. Yeah. How's it been this time? What's 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 been cracking with it? For me, uh, I'm here in a different capacity. I'm here representing Swiki Speed as a brand, and really, our our goal is to share the event with whoever pays attention to us through social media and YouTube, and like all those things, right? Not reinventing the wheel, just showcasing our culture you know it's a lot of people won't know anything about it if you don't share it right and usually i'm here running around like an idiot and speedos and cowboy boots and, i've seen the video you know yeah. first one's free hey <laughs> i got legs y'all for days <laughs> um but you know, this year it's, it's been really cool to have a different kind of a focus you know it's not about me and my brand it's about something larger than me right. and and in fact, every time I do work here, I think of the whole team that is in Charlotte, North Carolina. So I should probably do my job here because they're still doing theirs at home. Right. Because we're accountable to each other. Right. And we all give a shit. Right. We very much do. Like everyone that's there is passionate about it. Uh, everyone rides a motorcycle. Like, so they get it. Right. And uh, it, it makes me want to, you know, to be that bannerman 
and come out here and just, you know, share everything. And the vibe has been killer. Sometimes a show can be a, a bit bro-y. Sometimes it can be flat. Yeah. Um, it's neither of those things. I feel like it's a really friendly vibe. I mean, the machines are always top right. tier. This is no different. The performance scene has a huge footprint. That continues to grow, which is cool to see at a show like this, which has always been so chopper focused. Um, but let's face it, choppers are where the cool stuff comes from. So they definitely go hand in hand. And I've just had the best time. I've worked up my ass off, for real. But I've had a great time doing it. I feel more charged than I do drained at the end of the day. And right. that's when, you know, you're in a good room. Right. Well, I got to tell you, I always think that people are, are an energy. You know what I mean? And and uh, when you walk into a room, people gravitate towards you. And I was watching because I, I sit back and I watch. People were smiling. They were glad to see you. They were happy after they talked to you. And it was like, hope you're not so booked up that I can't get, get you on <laughs> one of the interviews. Because I wanted quality interviews with quality people. Sure. You know, I just didn't want filler. I don't want to spin the wheels and go through the motions. Like, just punching a clock for the sake of it. You know what I mean? But this time that we've had with you, we're super stoked, very grateful, and it's been great having you on our show. Is it, How can it, can anybody reach you on any social media sites? Oh, yeah. Is there anything you want for the company? You want? I, I'm easy to find. If you type in dump truck on Instagram, I'm probably the first dude that looks like this that pops up. If not, put an underscore in the end of it. So dump truck underscore on Instagram. And dump truck is one word. Most other places you'll find me. And, of course, Sawicki Speed, S-A-W-I-C-K-I, speed.com, and on Instagram and Facebook. I'm all over there, and I really appreciate you having me here. Good to have you. If there's you. anything that I could ever do at the end of my life, I just want to be known that I left the room a little bit better. So You did. We appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you. So. We're concluding this interview with Dump Truck. It's been a great one. We appreciate having him here. Uh, from our families from uh, Trinidad and from Russ Brown Motorcycles, we want to send our best to you on Born Free 15. Stay safe out there. Thanks and God bless.